I will give you a secret, very, very big secret. How do we get in Shushur into Salah? Habibi, mashallah, what a beautiful question. Jazakumullah khair. Remember that thing, when you, when you face the Qibla, your heart is meant to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the Prophet sallallahu says, when the believer stands up in the prayer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places that servant in his presence, facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This hadith is profound. When you stand in prayer, Allah faces you. And the worst thing you could do is that Allah faces you with attention and your mind is somewhere else. How bad does it feel? You're talking to someone and his mind, his mind is somewhere else. You would take offense, won't you? And imagine if you're talking to someone and he turns around as if you're not talking. How many people do this with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? One day, there's a story mentioned by Imam al-Dhahbi in Sayyid al-Alam al He says there was a group of people who were traveling at night. They came to this valley and it was, there were some woods. So they were getting themselves ready to sleep. As they were preparing themselves, a lion came about. So they jumped up onto the trees, taking shelter. But there was one person who had already started his Qiyam al-Layl. He was praying Qiyam al-Layl. The lion came, the man did not move. He kept praying. So the lion was walking around, he turned around the guy, and then he left. When these guys came down, Asman, they said, you're crazy. They said, the lion was here, you didn't move. He said, wallahi, I felt shy that I'm standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I fear something else. I was shy that I stand in front of Allah and I fear one of his creation. What level of focus on khushu'ah that is? Very high, okay? Now I'll give you the big secret and that's what I will conclude with. <clears throat> this secret is mentioned in the Quran but indirectly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ the believers are successful. They are the ones who are, who have khushu' in their prayer. They have khushu' in their prayer. Now, some of the scholars of tafsir say, yes, this is the first description of the believers. So if you want to know just for yourself, if this person has iman or not, look at his prayer. If he has khushu', that's a good sign. If he doesn't have khushu', okay, that's not a good sign. The important point here is that the reason for their khushu' is iman. Allah says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ In Arabic, the sequence of the descriptions has logic to it. So why did Allah say these believers are successful? They are the ones who have khushu' in salah. The scholars of tafsir say that means, okay, iman is the essence and these are the signs of iman. They have khushu' in salah, the first one. So the more iman you have, the more khushu' you're going to have. A second sign or indirect or some kind of insinuation in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ And seek help in patience and the prayer. Indeed, it is the prayer very difficult. It's a burdensome duty on people except for the khashi'een. Only the khashi'een find it easy to perform. Then Allah describes the khashi'een. وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ الَّذِينَ يَظُنُّونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُوا رَبِّهِمْ وَأَنَّهُمْ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ That's the secret of khushu' الَّذِينَ يَظُنُّونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُوا رَبِّهِمْ The khashi'een, what is their description? They have faith and conviction that they will return to Allah and meet Allah. That's it. That's the secret of khushu' If you truly believe that you will meet Allah on the day of judgment. And that's your ultimate destiny. That's the most important point in your future. The, the moment you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day, the more belief you have about this, the more khushu' you will have in salah. That's the secret of khushu'. So how do we get in khushu' in the salah? Habibi, mashallah, what a beautiful question. Jazakumullah khair. Really, it reminds me of the brother that asked a question about women and so on. I've had youngsters who say every time I say Allahu Akbar, you know, my honey just comes in my head, you know, and I just busy, oh, when will I see her and what will I do? And astaghfirullah, that's shaitan that's just got hold of us. So what do you do? Number one, you ask Allah's guidance. That's always there. It's Allah. It's Allah who grants it. But you take a look at the excess items we do on a daily basis, try and cut them out. So if you lower your gaze, the chances of you concentrating in salah are far more. And I'm not saying if you don't, if you lower your gaze, you will be able to concentrate because there are other factors as well. But it's one point. Another thing is, if you have too many things that you're doing in life, your concentration in salah will be less because it's, your, your day is filled without any order. 
and you're thinking of so many things, you're not calm, you're not collected, you haven't written down things sometimes, and you've got to think of so many things, and you're worried. Let me give you an example. If you have 20 things to do, and you've written them on a piece of paper, your mind has less in it, because you know you'll refer to the paper, and you tick it off. But when you haven't and you're relying on your brain, and this is an honest example, 20 things are there. When you start salah, you're remembering the 20 things I need to do. And then you're starting to say, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, and so on. And I'm busy thinking my 20 things. As soon as I'm finished my salah, hey, these 20 things here. And I start checking, what's it, what's it? So what have I done? I've increased in my mind, put in something that I could have just put on a piece of paper and held, held it. A lot of us don't have a piece of paper. We just want to remember things. So there's no barakah in our day. I'm not saying you have to have a piece of paper. But today you have technology. You can, you know, put it onto your phone. You can put it, you can delegate it. It's like a man who has a business and his business has grown and he wants to be the head of every department. His business will come crashing. You have to delegate. You have to start uh, developing it in such a way that you have a head of department who will do the small worries of every day. They will handle you. They report to you. If there's something big, you can handle it because now you're the CEO. But the problem with us is we want to handle every aspect of everything. Then when we get to salah, no concentration. So number one, to remove a lot of, to call out to Allah, to ask Allah, to remove a lot of the excess thoughts and excess baggage that perhaps we have. Then what we also need to know is uh, to increase the understanding of the Quran so that when you are reading salah uh, or fulfilling the salah, uh, whatever you are saying, you know the meaning of it. The minute that happens, you, the chances of you dwindling in terms of concentration minimizes. Because I know when I say Allahu Akbar, I enjoy that. Oh, my maker is the greatest. The worshipped one is the greatest. He is definitely the greatest. And then I'm saying Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik or any other dua, whatever, whatever you're reading. And then your Surah Al-Fatiha. And I'm concentrating on the meaning and I know a lot about it. So increase your knowledge of what is being recited in Salah and fulfilled. By the will of Allah, it will help you a lot. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us. And I'm so happy that you've asked because it's actually revived uh, my own commitment commitment to concentration in salah it happens to all of us you know you've got to catch a flight and you allahu akbar and you want it wonder what the time is you know wonder what the time is you know i recall once i was the imam uh, at at an airport and uh, i i led the salah and i have a habit that when you are an imam at the airport make the shortest possible salah the reason is people are catching a flight at the back and so i made a very short salah and I was sitting after that and there was a certain brother who spoke to me and he said, you know, I was in such and such an airport and there was one Imam and he started leading Salah and he was leading so long that one by one, the people started walking away, you know, <laughs> because what happened is I have a flight to catch. This guy is reading a long surah. He just looks at his clock and he's gone. Astaghfirullah. So you need to know, even when there is an Imam and all those who may be Imams, Think very carefully. It's better to have a shorter salah with concentration than to go on and on and on. I remember the first time when I was in Medina Munawwara and uh, we had Salatul Kusuf, you know, the salah of the eclipse. And the Imam was reading Suratul Baqarah and he started and he was going on and on. Mashallah. And you know what? And then he says, Allahu Akbar, he says, Allahu Liman Hamida, and he's reading, he's reading again, and he goes on and on. And the people who joined were not expecting that. So I remember clearly in front of me, there was a man, a boy, a youngster, who picked out his bottle of water, opened it and had a sip, and he put it back. And I'm busy thinking, does this guy know what he did? And you know, after Salah, I told him, I said, you drank water? He said, no, I didn't. This shows concentration, no concentration because it's prolonged. And I said, I swear you drank water. Do you have water in your, in your pocket? He said, yes, I do. I said, look at it. He looked at it and it was half. He said, hey, when did I drink the water? <laughs> so that's the thing. So may Allah help us to, 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 to increase, inshallah, our concentration in salah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all, really. You're starting to pray. Shaitan comes to you. It's my your business project. You know the other customer. He might not come today. Hurry up because there's a meeting. What are you going to say in the meeting? You're not ready for it. Yeah? Compare the salah to that business meeting. How long is it going to last you? Business meeting. Two years later, you won't even think about it. It's, it's, it's part of the past. But what about the salah? It's more everlasting. It's my connection to Allah. It has to do with the hereafter. It's not only this world. So if, if you use this kind of logic, you will be surprised how much focus will start to gravitate to the, to the salah. The same thing to your prayer. That's the real business deal. I'm doing it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who has more resources than Allah? Who controls my, all my resources in business? Who controls all this opportunity? Who brings it about? It's Allah. You're dealing with the source now. 
All the business, all the money, all the money, all the opportunity in this world, where does it come from? It comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are you tired of all these annoying ads on YouTube? Are you worried that a haram video might pop up? Well, the One Islam TV app is here to solve these problems, inshallah. The One Islam TV app is 100% free of any ads and is safe to browse for your peace of mind. Watch or listen to lectures and lessons while you work, rest or drive with your device switched off. Watch videos on demand or download videos and watch offline. Watch hundreds of high quality produced Islamic reminders, Quran learning videos, stories of the prophets and so much more. Two to four new videos uploaded daily, inshallah. One Islam TV is 100% run and owned by Muslims, which means a small amount you pay for your subscription is a sadaqa jariya, continuous charity for you as we use the funds raised to continue producing more beneficial videos and reminders. Insha'Allah. The One Islam TV app is now available on Apple devices, Apple TV, Android devices, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. So you can watch on most devices and smart TVs. Download now for a free 7-day trial. May Allah reward you for supporting our work.